I'm Joanne Vanko, author and online educator at Let's Go Sew. You know, embroidery has taken the world by storm. And we all, you know, those of us that are embroidering, we love our embroidery. Uh, we have so many capabilities, so much potential, and so many possibilities to make beautiful things with our embroidery machines. But there's one little thing that I know, maybe more than one, but this one particular thing that a lot of people struggle with, and that is puckers. So I wanna share some tips today for some pucker-free embroidery and give you some, just a few ideas. There's, we could go on, we could probably do a whole book's worth, but um, we wanna to touch on a few things that are prime reasons why you get puckers and some ways for you to avoid them. So first we need to talk, whenever we talk about embroidery, we're dealing with fabric and stabilizer combinations. And in my book, I have a lot of different combinations listed. I give you, you know, needles, threads, stabilizers, and combined with certain fabrics, I even have designs that were specifically designed for the fabrics that I used in the book. But sometimes I wanna deviate from that and I wanna take the beautiful designs that are in the book, that collection, and create some garments that are not what was in there originally, such as this dress. So this dress is made from a very lightweight knit. And my design itself was originally designed for a wool wrap. So it's got a little bit of thickness to it and a little bit of weight. If I don't do something to prevent those puckers and I just embroider that design directly on that lightweight knit, I'm gonna be in for a problem. So that's gonna give me the opportunity to tell you how I would conquer that. Well, first of all, I would always do a test. To test is best, I say that over and over and over again because it is so true. You know, they, they joke and say, you know, there are those that test and there are those that wish they tested, but I always test my designs when I'm doing a new combination. So again, I knew that I needed to beef up that fabric a little bit. The first choice I made was where to include the design to begin with. I wouldn't want to do that design around the hem because it would just simply ruin the drape of the dress and it just wouldn't be compatible. So I thought, well, what about a center band? That could work. That also gave me the opportunity to stabilize that a little bit more. So what I did is I fused um, a treacle interfacing to that entire center band area, and then I still used what would be a traditional uh, stabilizer that I would use with knits on the back, and I secured that with a temporary adhesive. I'm gonna talk a little bit about these things in a minute, but that is my temporary adhesive go-to to keep that connected. And I've got a sample here of another, um, another way that that's, that that's used. What we've got is a, a stretchy fabric here, and we've got a stretchy fabric here. This is the same fabric. Look how that stretches. When you embroider, in order to prevent puckers, you want to eliminate 100% of the stretch. So if you're using a stretchy fabric, you need to do something on the stabilizer side, on the back side, maybe two things like I did here, to keep that fabric from stretching so it no longer, no longer has that stretch factor. So I used a mesh stabilizer, and this particular one is fusible. And this one works really good for a knit. Like I said, it's, it's ideal for that. Um, but we've also got other types that aren't fusible that we would use that temporary spray with. So look at that, look how nice and firm that is. Now, another tip for embroidering without puckers is to always use the size hoop that most closely matches your design. So in this case, I think I used a five by seven. But whatever your design is, match your hoop size to that. You know, some machines, like tubular embroidery machines, have a whole variety of mini hoops that work great for doing really small things. Big things are fine too, but if your design is big, you know, use a big, big hoop. If your design is small, use the smallest hoop you can get away with. Another thing that I like to do is I like to pre-test the tension of my hoop. This is really one of my best all time ever tricks. So what I do is I stabilize my fabric and then I will go ahead and loosen the screw and hoop that so that it's easy to hoop. I will tighten that up nice and snug and that is just pre-tensioning that. That is just adjusting my hoop so that it accommodates the fabric. Now I pop it back out and I would do whatever positioning I need to do for placement and I like to put my um, hoops together like I put my foot in a shoe. I do the front end first and then 
push it down in the back. So you can see that's nice, it's smooth, it's taut. Always make sure you push your hoop all the way down so that is very, very smooth and very, very taut. If we have any movement in here whatsoever, we are gonna end up with puckers because once the fabric then goes back to its original position, it's going to wrinkle and it's gonna crinkle around there. So let's talk about other ways to, to conquer that. Fabric that's soft, like cotton, is very pucker, pucker prone. <laughs> and so think about maybe pre-quilting that. I did that on the collar of this. And in this case, I, I used a baby flannel and really created a puckered look so that when I put my embroidery on top, I've got basically planned pucker. So I don't have puckering of the embroidery. But I can also stabilize fabric with um, some type of a, a liquid stabilizer or a spray that takes that soft and turn and makes it makes it crispy. So that's another idea for you. Another pucker proof tip is to always make sure that your hoop is entirely full. So if I'm doing something like this with a small point or a corner, I want to make sure, in this case, I used a sticky stabilizer so that all of that is held in place. There's no air space around that hoop that, again, would allow for movement. What about um, a design that's really heavy and really thick? This design is, is beautiful, but it is heavy and it is thick. I stitched it on a pretty firm fabric, but I knew that still would not be enough. So what I did in this case is I fused medium weight interfacing, kind of a similar idea that I did here. So most often when I'm doing something that's home decor or craft, I will beef up my fabric with fusible interfacing and then I'm gonna get a much, much better quality design. Another thing you wanna do is add tearaway stabilizer. So I like to use a lightweight tearaway. This can be hooped with the fabric or it can be floated underneath the hoop so that it's um, not attached. The beauty of this is it completely tears away. So a lot of ideas for you, a lot of variety. Choose your designs that match your fabric, choose your stabilizer, and make pretty pucker-proof embroidery.